how can this hospital in a town of 117,000 people, practically in the middle of nowhere, be the number one hospital in the US? Welcome to MedBreak, my name is Sam. Just a few days ago, the US News released its ranking for the nation's top hospital for the year 2020 and the 2021. And for the fifth consecutive year, Mayo Clinic got the number one spot. I was a patient there. When I was a medical student, I rotated through Mayo Clinic, and currently, I am a resident doctor at Mayo Clinic in the Department of Radiology. When they announced that Mayo Clinic was number one, there wasn't fireworks and fanfare. Nurses weren't giving each other high fives while they were crossing the hallway. It was just patient care as usual. But I could tell that the hospital administrators were very happy. I mean, there were signs everywhere. They put banners up, and you could really tell. Our CEO left a very sweet message on YouTube thanking all the people who work at Mayo Clinic for making this possible. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be the number one hospital? Do they save the most number of lives? Isn't that what hospitals are supposed to do? Do they have the best doctors? So in this video, I'll be covering how the US News comes up with the ranking system for the nation's top hospitals. Before I continue, please smash that like button to help this channel grow. And if you like the content of this channel, the things I'm covering, please consider subscribing. I'll be summarizing the methodology here, but if you wanna read the full report released by the US News, which is 176 pages long, I'll post the link for it in the description below, but I'll try to make things very concise and really easy to understand. It's important to understand that while most of the hospitals in the US were considered, not every hospital was ranked. You need to meet certain criteria. So first, you need to be a hospital where you're able to admit patients to take care of them in the hospital, called inpatient facilities. The hospital was further considered if you met one of these four criteria, any one of these. So you had to be a teaching hospital, or it's affiliated with a medical school. The hospital at least should have 200 beds, or have 100 beds with at least four of the eight technologies that the US News outlined that are kind of correlated with high quality of patient care. Some of this could be having a PET CT machine or having some specific radiotherapy machines. From there, the hospital should have treated a number of patients that meets the threshold in a certain predefined conditions and procedures. So from around 4,600 hospitals that they started considering, about 1,900 hospitals were good enough to be considered for ranking eventually. And from there, the top hospitals got ranked. From the eligible hospitals, the US News looked at two main things. They looked at how the hospitals ranked in their specialty ranking. Medicine is divided into many different subspecialties, and the US News looked at 16 of them and ranked hospitals in each of those 16 subspecialties. And then they also looked at how the hospital performed in 10 defined conditions and procedures. And I'll be going into a little bit more detail. From the 16 subspecialties of medicine that they looked at, 12 of them, the ranking list was derived from, as they claim, hard data. The other four was derived from expert opinion. Now let's look at how the US News ranked each hospital in each medical subspecialty. The number one thing they looked at was patient outcome, which makes sense. How good is the hospital in keeping the patient alive. This is what hospitals do. If the hospital was able to keep very sick patients alive and got them better, then they got more points than keeping relatively healthy people alive, which should be expected. If a relatively healthy patient went into the hospital and didn't make it or got worse, then this would be very bad. The second thing they looked at was patient experience. So the hospitals are required to do a survey of how the patients felt about their experience in the hospital through the Hospital Consumer Assessment of Healthcare Providers and Systems Survey, called HCAPS. So patient feedback was an important factor. Another thing that the US News used was patient care related factors, such as how many nurses are available per patient, the patient volume, how many patients go through the hospital annually, Certain clinically proven technologies, like the things I mentioned, having a PET CT machine, having a radiotherapy machine, or some of the more advanced technologies that makes better patient care possible. And also some professional and specialty specific recognitions from professional societies. The last thing they looked at was feedback from the experts in the field. Other doctors, 
perception of what the hospital is. So the US News makes a big deal about how it doesn't really consider reputation in its metric, but this is the only place where reputation could play a role. So annually, the US News sends out surveys to different physicians, different experts in the field, asking which five hospitals the physicians would recommend if they had a very complex patient that were kind of out of their hands in terms of being able to manage. Just as a side note, how the hospitals responded to the COVID-19 crisis was not included in any of this. So after looking at all these metrics, the top 50 hospitals were ranked and you had to be ranked to be scored. The number one spot got 25 points, the number two spot got 24 points, the number three spot got 23 points, and so on. Hospital that ranked number 21 through 50 got five points. So you can rack up a lot of points by placing in the top for multiples of specialty. Let's look at how Mayo did. They got number three in cancer, number two in cardiology and heart surgery, number one in diabetes and endocrinology, number three in ears, nose, and throat, number one in gastroenterology and GI surgery, number four in geriatrics, number one in gynecology, number one in nephrology, number seven in neurology and neurosurgery, number two in orthopedics, number one in pulmonary and lung surgery, and number one in neurology. Lots of placements in the top three. And in fact, if you combined all the scores, then Mayo did the best in these 12 specialty taken together. Now, I had mentioned that there are four other subspecialties of medicine that mainly used expert opinion and reputation to come up with its ranking. And this is because it wouldn't make sense to use the metric used for the 12 other subspecialties for these four medical subspecialties. Because in these four subspecialties, the patient mortality, especially after adjusting for patient risk, it's very low. So out of the four things that was used to rank, come up with a ranking for the 12 other specialties, they use just the last one, the expert opinion, where they send out the surveys and see where the, the five places that the doctors would recommend in caring for their most complex patients. It's important to note here that the hospital should have been recommended by at least 5% of the respondents of that US News annual physician survey to be ranked in the first place. And in these four subspecialties, about a dozen hospitals got ranked. Accordingly, the point system was adjusted a little bit. If you placed one, then you'd get 10 points. Then if you placed second, you'd get nine points and so on. Places 10 and on just got one point. Seeing how Mayo did, ophthalmology was not ranked because they did not meet that 5% threshold. They ranked number five in psychiatry, number six in rehab, and number three in rheumatology. So they racked up some points here too. The last thing that the US News looked at was how the hospitals performed in 10 defined procedures and conditions. And these conditions and procedures were colon cancer surgery, lung cancer surgery, abdominal aortic aneurysm repair, heart bypass surgery, hip replacement, knee replacement, congestive heart failure, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, otherwise known as COPD, aortic valve surgery or aortic valve replacement, transcatheter aortic valve replacement, and they mentioned that the list will grow in the later years. The hospital got 12 points for any procedure or condition that was rated as high performing. So what was analyzed to determine if a hospital was high performing? They looked at hospital's outcome for the patient, the 30-day mortality rate, did the patient do well after leaving the hospital, and also the readmission rate, the, the patient come back after being discharged from the hospital. Imagine that a patient went to the hospital, supposedly got better and was sent home, but within 30 days, they came back to the hospital because things continued to get worse, or didn't get better, or something really bad happened. This is something that hospitals around the US is really trying to avoid because it has to do with number one, you know, quality of patient care. You want to send patients home in a healthy as possible, condition and set them up for success later down the road. And also, the, you don't get reimbursed from Medicare if the patient comes back to the hospital within 30 days. They also looked at the length of stay for the patient. How long did they stay in the hospital? Supposedly, a shorter length of stay means they had less complication, which kept them in the hospital. They also had factors linked to high quality of care, like volume mentioned before, the nurse staffing ratio, and the patient satisfaction scores. New in 2020 was the hospital stance on transparency. So this only applied for the cardiovascular and the neurosurgery category. If the hospital decided to release the score they received from these other professional organizations, then they got bonus points. I think this kind of doesn't make sense because if a hospital got a high rating from those professional organizations, then they're more likely to release their score. 
But I think this is just to generally encourage transparency in hospital systems overall. 1,400 hospitals rated high performing in at least one condition or procedure. There are 37 hospitals that was high rating in all 10 conditions and procedures and Mayo was one of them. 12 points for each conditions or procedure would lead to 120 points. Putting all the points together, a hospital could reach a maximum of 448 points. None of the hospitals reached 448. Not every, there wasn't one hospital that ranked number one in everything. They took the 20 hospitals with the most points and made the best hospital on a roll ranking. And this is where Mayo placed number one. It is really important to note where the data comes from. It could be just one guy in US News randomly placing hospitals in different ranked spots. They felt like giving Mayo the number one spot again this year. That's not the case. Sources they looked at were the standard analytical file, which basically analyzes all the hospital inpatient admissions paid by Medicare from 2014 to 2018. I'll talk about the implications of this later. They also looked at the Federal Centers for Medicare and Medicare Services data, the 2018 American Hospital Association's annual survey, and some professional societies data like the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. And I had mentioned that the US News sends those annual surveys to different physicians, asking them to name the top five places that they would refer their sick patients to. Now there are very important considerations regarding these data and where they come from. So the scoring system largely looks at data for patients for older than 65 years old in the inpatient setting. This is because the Medicare covers patients who are older than 65 years old, essentially. So that's all they have. They can only analyze what is available. The patients who are younger than 65 years old, there's just not that good of a data. But it's true that people younger than 65 years old go to the hospital sometimes. Hopefully there'll be better data available going forward so that they can come up with a more accurate ranking system. However, the US News's argument for not needing to do that is, you know, older patients tend to be sicker and they have other conditions like diabetes or heart disease that makes management of their conditions very difficult. So if a hospital is able to take good care of these very sick patients, then that shows how good a hospital ultimately is. This is their argument, you can take it or leave it. Secondly, there is a separate US News rank list for children's hospital and children's care. They have a very different metric of how things are measured and they have a whole different ranking system and I think it should be that way. 10 hospitals were named in the children's hospitals honor roll and just to let you know, Mayo was not in it. Another very important consideration is that the data is basically looking at patients who are admitted to the hospital and got their care within the hospital, stayed there before they could go home in the inpatient facilities. A lot of these hospitals are part of a bigger healthcare system where there are clinics and they see patients in clinics and prevent healthy people from getting sick. These outpatient data was not analyzed as part of this ranking. Just this year, the US News started to look at outpatient data with the knee replacement surgery, but hopefully they'll do this more because a lot of healthcare is done in the outpatient setting. Personally, Mayo Clinic being ranked number one of course makes me feel good because I get to work there and learn from the patients there and the doctors there. It makes an overall good training environment for medical students and residents. For radiology especially, there'll be patients coming from all over the world to get their diseases treated, and especially if they're very complex cases or if they're very rare. So I'll be exposed to a lot of these pathologies and I get to learn from these different diseases. I would not have gotten the chance to otherwise. But what does it mean for patients that Mayo is number one or this whole ranking list in general? Do you need to go to the number one place to get your condition treated? The US News makes it very clear that this rank list is just a start. They say patients still have to do their own research and talk with their doctors. We also understand that families have to consider such factors as the stress and expense of travel and lodging in another city and their insurer's willingness to pay for care if a hospital is out of network. Ultimately, it's the patient's choice. I hope that this video was helpful in that it kind of explained how these ranking systems are formed. I know that a lot of people look at the US News for different kind of rankings, not just for hospitals, for you know colleges and medical schools too. It's really good to look at how these rank lists are formed so that you're just more informed when you make your decisions for yourself or for another person that you care about. Please leave in the comments what you think about the US News's ranking methodology. Do you agree with it? Do you think it has limitations? One, two, I'd love to hear three. them.